Okay, in this video we're going to talk about the reaction and mechanism of forming an enamine. We're going to be converting an aldehyde or a ketone using a secondary amine into what we call an enamine. All right, so the key functional groups here, here we have a ketone or an aldehyde. And either of these species are going to react with a secondary amine. And remember, a secondary amine is simply a nitrogen connected to two carbon groups and one hydrogen. So when we combine these two products, and this is done under acid catalyst, we're going to form out a new functional group called an enamine. And an enamine is exactly what you think it is. It is an alkene directly attached to an amine. So here we have a carbon-carbon double bond directly attached to a nitrogen. So there is our enamine. Again, here's another example, carbon-carbon double bond attached to a nitrogen. There's our enamine functional group. Okay, so let's look at a specific reaction here. Again, now we're starting with a ketone. And here is our secondary amine. Let's draw that out in blue. We have a nitrogen connected to 1H, two methyl groups. So this is dimethyl amine. And the reaction is quite fast. So in reality, many ketones and amines will react, or aldehydes. And you don't even need acid catalysts. But it's sort of easier to walk through the mechanism when we do have acid too to sort of so show formation of the product. So in this reaction, what we're going to do is lose two hydrogens and oxygen. So we're actually going to form water as a side product. So the oxygen here is going to be uh, leave the cyclohexanone group to form the oxygen, we're going to lose this hydrogen as well, and we're going to lose one of the hydrogens that is on the alpha carbon. So the hydrogen in black here will remain, but we'll lose one hydrogen on the alpha carbon, one hydrogen on the nitrogen, and an oxygen. So the product we get out here is we still have our six-membered ring, but now I'm going to have a single bond to our nitrogen, which will be attached to the two methyl groups, and I will have a carbon-carbon double bond. So you'll notice on the right side here, instead of two hydrogens, there's only one. Right. So again, we don't have to show that hydrogen So just another way to draw this, that's the product we'll be forming. And again, this is called an enamine, an alkene attached to an amine. So let's go through the mechanism here. What's going to happen is this oxygen has two lone pairs, and it's a, it's a decent electrophile, and, and the amine is a decent nucleophile. Um, but to make it a better electrophile, we can protonate that oxygen. So the oxygen had two bonds and two lone pairs, but one of the, those lone pairs is going to form a new bond to an H. Therefore, this oxygen now has three bonds and one lone pair and a positive charge. And again, we can draw a really nice resonance structure for this compound where the positive charge, sorry, that wasn't drawn well, the positive charge is on the carbon. Then what we've done here is made a really good electrophile so that our nucleophile can now attack. And this is very similar to the mechanism that we've seen with imine formation. The first five steps are exactly the same. So again, we'll protonate, our amine will attack. So we'll now have a single bond to our OH, 
and we have a new bond to our nitrogen. And we have to keep in mind that that nitrogen is still connected to a methyl group and it's still connected to a proton. So our nitrogen had three bonds and one lone pair. Now it has four bonds. Therefore, the nitrogen has a positive charge. Well, clearly in the reaction, we want to keep that there. So what we're going to do now is to deprotonate this amine. And under these conditions, the amine you'll see acts as a nucleophile, but it's also very basic as well. So the amine serves two purposes in this two purposes in this reaction. It is the nucleophile, but it actually functions as a base as well. So the amine will deprotonate this intermediate to form our next intermediate. And now you'll notice that this nitrogen has three bonds in a lone pair. All right, so we're halfway through our mechanism at this point. Again, we need to get rid of this oxygen again, and we're going to do that by, again, protonating it. And remember, under acidic conditions, an OH is not a good leaving group. But by protonating it, we do turn it into a very good leaving group. So now we have, again, our nitrogen and a lone pair. And now because this is a good leaving group, our nitrogen can come down to form a double bond, thereby kicking off that water molecule. So we're now going to eliminate out our water molecule. And you notice the intermediate that we form here, we now have a carbon-carbon, or sorry, a carbon-nitrogen double bond. And that nitrogen has a positive charge. So in the mechanism of the imine, there was an H here that we would simply deprotonate to form the imine. So now this is different, all right? Because this is a secondary amine, there are no hydrogens here to deprotonate. These are both methyl groups and we can't deprotonate a methyl group. So what do we do? Well, let's draw the resonance structure down below. Right? As we've seen before, these two electrons can come up to the nitrogen to form a carbocation here. And now here is where this hydrogen is going to come into play. Because there's not H's here, we cannot deprotonate these. But to stabilize the molecule, we need to deprotonate somewhere. And let's draw in these hydrogens that are adjacent. So I'm drawing in hydrogens that are on the alpha carbon. That's the carbon next to the C double bond N, or the hydrogen next to a C double bond O. That's called the alpha carbon. So I'm going to draw in those hydrogens. And what we can see is, again, If I take our amine, it can act as a base. It can now deprotonate this hydrogen, move the electrons to form the carbon-carbon double bond, and push that double bond up to the nitrogen. So by deprotonating the hydrogen on the alpha carbon, I get this final product, our enamine here. I can show the mechanism, the arrows for this step, on this resonance structure or here. So let me draw in the arrows here as well. So we can take this lone pair, steal that H, these two electrons can then come down and form the double bond. You don't have to show both, you can do it from either resonance structure. Regardless of which way you go, you get out our final product, which is an enamine. So to review the mechanism, we protonate, attack, deprotonate, protonate, eliminate, and then deprotonate. So the, car the oxygen of the carbonyl will protonate with H plus 
to form our protonated intermediate, which is a very good electrophile. The amine will attack the carbon of the carbonyl, forming our new carbon-nitrogen bond and an OH. This nitrogen was connected to a methyl, two methyls and an H. They're still connected, so the positive charge is now in the nitrogen. Our amine can now act as a base to deprotonate that to get our intermediate here. Again, we can protonate our alcohol to form our protonated alcohol, which is now a good leaving group. The lone pair can come down, eliminate off, kick off that water molecule to form our two resonant structures here. And again, this is where the mechanism of the enamine is different because we started with a secondary amine. There are no hydrogens to deprotonate. I cannot form an imine. So my secondary amine will now again act as a base, deprotonate the hydrogen, form the carbon-carbon double bond, and move this double bond up as a lone pair on the nitrogen, or you can draw the mechanism from the other resonance structure. And that is the mechanism of how a ketone or aldehyde and a secondary amine forms an enamine.